Which one am I using? That. Oh, look. Or this. Test. Good evening. Come on, wait, come on. We're in school now. Hello? <laughs> there we go. Good evening, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, my name is Mitch Young. I am the principal of FCHS. I'm very, very intentional with this crowd to call this FCHS for obvious reasons. And I think before we even kick things off, if you don't mind to just stand up if you're a graduate of FCHS so we can see how many grads we have here. That's awesome. Is Judah Smith and Emma Allen here? These are future grads of FCHS. If you ladies don't mind to come up here to the front, we're gonna start this off a little, a little bit of a new wrinkle if you've been to these before, but these ladies have volunteered to lead this crowd, and we would hope that you would join us if you can remember the words in the singing of our alma mater. Thank you, ladies. Well, we're here tonight, obviously, to honor four really special members of our alumni. And uh, there's, there's just a handful of nights. You know, as a, as a high school principal, you have a lot of activities going on. And if you pulled in tonight, you saw the flash of Crimson Car Line as we had kids here brass in school. After school, we had a freshman football game going on. We had some STEM parents coming in for an information set. So the school never, this place never sleeps. It is, it is, it is going 24-7, and we love that. If you're a high school person, you, you, you love that. That's what it's all about. Um, <laughs> tonight, we're going to honor four special people. I normally don't talk about any of them, because we've got speakers lined up to do all that tonight. I do have to say there's one in the audience tonight that's going to go in the Hall of Fame who's just made my life miserable. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and air that out. I was blessed to get the job here six years ago. And the first place I walked in on the, on the East Campus was into the Media Center. And I looked up at this 50th anniversary and, and this beautiful set of paintings, this mural across the top. And there's this one really defined figure kind of looking down, almost like God from the heavens. <laughs> and I said, God, that looks, that looks really familiar. Well, of course, that's Kenny Fox looking down. And it began with that, and then it began with about every time I would want to do something, and we've got some veterans of our staff back there, and they know this is true. Every time we'd want to do a little new wrinkle, ah, it's not what Kenny would do. <laughs> So I'm so excited that we built this new, that, that, and for a lot of you that haven't been back, this new cafeteria, new media center, new front uh, entrance to our building. It was such an exciting time to be a part of that. And, and I've got to tell you, at the time, about the time we opened this up was right around the time of our 60th anniversary as a school. And that's when Josh Lowe stepped up, one of our assistant principals, and took on the challenge 
of putting together an alumni association, which was, was a bit overdue, but we're so grateful he did. And with help from our community, particularly, I'm gonna put a plug in here, but the Rotary Club of Forsyth County and the members of that Rotary Club, one of which is gonna be honored tonight, we're so instrumental in kicking that off, and we're so grateful for it. And when you get a new facility like this, you've got to, you've got to brand it. You've got to, you've, there's so much that goes on with signage and, and expenses that just aren't covered you know, by, a, by a bond or a SPLOS, that sort of thing. And the Alumni Association came in and, and just went to town with that. And I'm going to come back to that in a second and thank the Alumni Association again. But the big excitement for me was moving out of East Campus from Kenny's office with Kenny looking down from the clouds into this facility. That summer, if the Rotary Club members remember, we, we opened this up and uh, had a Rotary Club meeting here that summer to kind of kick it off. That was our unofficial grand opening. And uh, I heard more than once, well, man, if Kenny designed this place, this would have been in place, that would have been in place. So we're over here. Now we get to put his picture up here. So every day I walk in, I get to see Kenny out there every day. And I say all that, of course, tongue in cheek, because there, there is a standard of excellence in this county. And, and when it comes to principals, Kenny is the standard. And uh, it, it's a real honor to see you go in tonight. Kenny. All right, going back to the Alumni Association, the, the real task that Dr. Lowe had, Josh had, in putting that together was to find the right movers and shakers in this county that had a love for this school and a love of history. The goal is to preserve our history, to really make the, the experience better for the students that were here, and to build for the future. Um, in that first year, uh, I talked about the signage and, and all, the, all the expenses that, that aren't covered. The Alumni Association stepped, Association stepped up to care of that. Uh, one of our great programs is our automotive program that just continues to grow and flourish. They've poured money into that program for us. Our school mission, an obvious, you know, our motto has never changed. It's always focusing on the excellence in the three A's, and academics, the arts, and athletics. And that, that hasn't changed. We've, we've strived to maintain that. Our mission here is we want to lead our students to be healthy and productive American citizens who will solve problems, communicate effectively, and serve selflessly. But what's really become big, and it's so important, if you follow the news at all, or you have kids or grandkids, is that part of our mission statement that talks about healthy. Healthy and productive. The productive part, that's what, we, that's what our teachers are here to work on. And they work every day to raise the bar and to, to make it more challenging and to provide support. But the healthy part in this day and age where, my goodness, you've got to take like 15 AP courses and have a 4.5 GPA to even be considered at a place like UGA, that, that's put a lot of pressure on our kids. And so we've worked really hard to try to develop some healthy outlets for our kids. And one of the things that we developed, and Karen Cole, who's a, a 25, 26 year veteran teacher who's here tonight, pushed really hard for us to develop a, a new concept called a wellness center, which in essence is a place for kids to go to kind of unplug, and literally unplug from their devices, to unplug from the pressures of school, uh, and to just go spend 30 minutes, if nothing else, just breathing. Uh, it's an opportunity, you know, we live in a day and age where you hear about, oh no, a day and age where, we, where you talk all the time about prayer being taken out of, taken out of school. And what the wellness centers provide is a place for our kids that are faithful kids to be able to go and have a quiet place to pray. Um, and we had all these grand ideas for what we wanted to do, and it came with a pretty steep price tag. And this alumni association never batted an eye, stepped up, and made that a reality. And while doing all that, I think at this date, uh, the alumni association has given, awarded more than $8,000 in scholarships. And, um, and obviously, the, the crowning event that we have every year is this special occasion, which is the Hall of Fame induction. So I want to just give a big shout out and a big applause. I know Josh is going to call them out by name, but, but a huge thank you to the Forsyth Central Alumni Association. And with that, I will turn it over to the man that helped bring that 
to life for us, Dr. Josh Lowe. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, glad to see the great turnout tonight here at Central. As uh, Mr. Young shared, we have, um, you know, something going on all the time. There's no better place in this county to be. This is the, um, you know, we talk about Central, we talk about the Central family, we talk about, um, you know, all that's going on, but it all goes back to this is where it started. And many of you here were here when that happened. And if not, you were here along the way, and it's really, um, it's a special place. I'd like to recognize a few folks, and we'll get down to the um, business of the evening to recognize our inductees. Um, first and foremost, and a few of these folks were not here. They're at other events or other, um, other um, places they had to be tonight. But first and foremost, I would like to call the name of the Alumni Board of Directors. And if you're here, would you please stand and be recognized? I know Dustin Cannon's on the board. He's not here. He's coaching football. Um, Lee Crow, Paula Galt. Paula's here, Mike Gravett, Judy Jenkins, Linda Lang, Cindy Hansard, Shannon Mize, Gail Mize, Deborah Moore, Amanda Neighbors, Tim Perry, George Perkle taking pictures for us. And those will be posted online for everybody that's inducted tonight. Everyone's always interested in how to get the pictures. George gives them all to us, and they're usually on our social media sites. Uh, Joey Perkle, who I don't think is here now. He's here earlier helping set up. Angie Richards, Kevin Talent, Chuck Welch. And he's rolled off the board, but Bobby Thomas is here with us, and Bobby's with us to help us get this started um, and get it off the ground. I'd also like to recognize Amy Robinson, who's here tonight. This doesn't happen without Amy Robinson. This not the alumni period. She's um, alumni secretary, and she's, she's super to support us. Um, also, I'd like to recognize Heather Hanline, our graphic students, Melissa Labra. If you're here, please wave. Heather in the back. Um, Heather and her class designs all of our alumni logos. We try to do things in-house. We have so many talented kids. They designed our um, brochures for tonight, as well as our logo several years ago and so forth. Jason Hanline and all of our visual arts students this is live streaming tonight, so I know there'll be a link on the, the um, school website and the Facebook and things like that if you want to go back and watch. Um, thanks to Jason, Jim Tozier, Ms. Hurt, and our ambassadors who are here tonight all decked out. Um, Ms. Mize was part of the brainchild behind getting that started, and our kids do so much here to help support our, um, our school and usher folks in and show you around and things like that. Um, a central alumnus who's not with us tonight, but he did build the display outside Robbie Tribble and it's a, a beauty, beautiful um, case and this podium and we appreciate him. I'm sure I've accidentally left somebody out and if that's the case I'm sincerely sorry but we're going to um, get to the business at hand and recognize um, our folks tonight. Let me say before we start tomorrow night inductees if you can be here at um, 645 down by the rock which is near the gym uh, we're going to recognize you guys before the game, about 7 p.m. on the new home side. Mr. Young mentioned our new stadium, I mean our new facility here, and it's awesome, but our um, Board of Education, Darla Lott's here with us tonight. We thank Darla and our, our Board of Education, Dr. Bearden, for the great support we have. But they have um, built a new stadium at Central, the second to none, new facilities for our spring athletic teams and our football team and just just you're not going to recognize it when you see it in the daylight or with the, under the lights tomorrow night as we play north and what our students are affectionately calling the hick out so um, if you're from north not trying to step on any toes there but um, games at 7 30 tomorrow night but we're having our alumni cookout tomorrow night at 6 which will be um, right here on the practice field by the pavilion be followed by our induction or pardon me our recognition of our inductees on the field at seven o'clock so Please join us there, free to attend to, for the, you had to pay to get in the game, but the, um, the tailgate's free to attend, so please join us tomorrow night. And with that said, I'd like to call Casey Martin up. Casey's another assistant principal who has um, worked with me on the Alumni Association really for the past couple of years, and he's taken more of a leadership role with that, and he's been um, super to work with, um, does a great job with us here, but I'd like Casey, um, each year I, I read the, the um, biography. Casey's going to do that for us this year and um, look forward to recognizing our inductees. So thanks everybody for being here. Mr. Martin. Thank you, Josh. 
Yep. So before I get started, I'll go ahead and get uh, Miss Burton and family members and everyone, if, if you want to come up here uh, in front of the Precise Central banner here. What is it called? Backdrop. We can get y'all up here as I read this. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Uh, the first inductee in uh, 2019 is Miss Maxine H. Burton. She's of the class of 1969, business and community leader. She was born and raised in Forsyth County. Maxine H. Burton attended the University of Georgia, uh, joined Alpha Z Delta sorority, and earned a Bachelor of Science in Education and Master of Education degrees. Her education continued at Harvard Business School through executive courses in 1998 and 2001. In 1982, Maxine and her husband, Bob, founded Burton Burton, leading the balloon and gift industry. Her many local and national awards placed her as an industry leader and a community servant. Selling baskets through her charity, Weaving Hope, Maxine raised funds to help build a school in Rwanda. Maxine's work is recognized by the Georgia 4-H Foundation, the Lifetime Achievement Award, the UGA President's Annual Report for Outstanding Philanthropy, Florist Review, and in the UGA College of Education Insider. Maxine is a member of the Committee of 200, the Society of International Business Fellows, Class of 1999, the Women's Leadership Board of Harvard Business School, Chief Executive Organization and CEO Women's Forum, University of Georgia Foundation, Emeritus Trustee, Leadership Athens, Leadership Georgia, and First American Bank and Trust. She serves on the International Floor Culture Expo Advisory Board and Georgia Council for the Arts. Maxine is the daughter of Emma Lou and the late Maxie Hubbard. She and her husband Robert have two children who both work at the company and three grandchildren. Forsyth Central High School is proud to induct Maxine H. Burden into the 2019 Class of the Hall of Fame. not a very good speaker, so I didn't realize I had to speak. Uh, thank you so much, and I really appreciate everyone for this honor. This is quite a, a, when you look at the people on the board and all the people that's graduated from Forsyth County, Forsyth Central High School, excuse me, uh, it's a, really a wonderful honor, and I really appreciate Linda Lane nominating me, so thank you, Linda, and thanks to all of you, and I hope the school continues to grow and prosper as it has in the past. Okay, the next inductee is uh, Mr. Kenny Fox. So we'll have you and your family if you wanna come on up. Okay, Mr. Fox, uh, of course, was a Forsyth Central High School principal, 1989 to 2006. Uh, Kenny Fox was born in Middletown, Ohio. He earned a Bachelor of Arts degree from Georgetown College, a Master's in History at Georgia College, and an MBD in EDS from Georgia Southern. He and Diane are celebrating 47 years of marriage and have two children, Kelly and Allison, which are also graduates of Forsyth Central. Fox's teaching career began in Kentucky in 1972. From 1974 to 1984, he served as teacher, coach, athletic director, and assistant principal in Lawrence County. In 1985, he had the opportunity to become principal in Trutland County. Then came the most rewarding time in his career when he was hired as principal at Forsyth Central High School. He served in this capacity for 17 years. Mr. Fox contributed to the Forsyth County community by serving as a deacon, teacher, and choir member at his church. He was also an active member of the Optimist Club. Mr. Fox was honored statewide and nationally as Administrator of the Year for his support of the fine arts, but his greatest honor was to see the Bulldog family recognized for outstanding performance in many successful programs during his tenure. It was his ultimate goal to make every member of the Central family 
feel just as vital to the successes of Forsyth Central High School as the next person. Have a great Bulldog Day. Forsyth Central High School is proud to induct Kenny Fox into the 2019 Class of the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, th this uh, school was my life. I loved it. I loved everybody and everything part of it. And uh, I appreciate Paula giving me the opportunity, you know, to be a part of this. I was going through my uh, stuff and, and, and Mitch, I'm sorry that you had to, you know, be onslaught with all that stuff. I'm going to tell this on Mitch. Um, when I retired in 2006, uh, I, I went 49% with the county and uh, helped Richard Gill open up West Forsyth. Well, Mitch was one of the first people we interviewed. And at the interview, I told uh, Mr. Gill, I says, well, you better work that guy hard because you ain't going to keep him long. And uh, so as a result, you know, I'm, I'm excited that what you all have done here is just, it's just amazing. Mr. Childs and I, and uh, Mr. Childs is good too, those of you that know Mr. Childs. Uh, we came up here, I guess, maybe two years ago, and they got a tour. I was just blown away, you know, because I told Mitch earlier that when I first came up here in June 89, we had 39 trailers, and we had them all over campus. And of course, you know, when it rains, it's awful, you know. But anyway, uh, as I was, because I called Amy, and I said, Amy, do I have to say anything? She said, Mr. Fox. I'd never seen you go for a crowd and not have something to say. <laughs> well, I got a little bit to say, but I won't be long, I promise. But anyway, uh, as I was going through my things, and, and I, I got to tell this on my grandson, he saw this picture on the Wall of Fame, and he says, Pop, you young. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Luke. But uh, we did a newsletter every month. And I went through and found the last one I did in May of 2006. And their marriage was good. Their dreams focused. Their best friends lived barely a wave away. I can see them now. Dad in trousers, t-shirt, and a hat, and mom in a house dress, this town in hand. It was a time for fixing things. And my dad, he could fix anything, literally. It was a way of life. Sometimes it made me crazy. All that refixing, eating, renewing. I remember many times wishing it was different. But we were just getting by. I and my two brothers and sister and mom and dad lived in a little white house. A little white house only had two bedrooms, a living room, and a kitchen. No running water or indoor plumbing. And we used an outhouse out by the creek. And all the places, I can't believe we had an outhouse by the creek. <laughs> But anyway, and, and I can remember telling my friends that, oh, yeah, we had running water. We had to go get it. <laughs> you know, that was a way of life. But when my dad died on, on that clear summer August night in the warmth of his little white house, in his bedroom and in his bed, I was stuck with the pain of learning that sometimes there isn't anyone fixing. Sometimes we care about the most things get used up and go away, never to return. So while we have it, it's best we love it, care for it, and fix it when it's broken, and heal it when it's sick. This is true for marriage and old cars and children with bad report cards, dogs with bad hips, and people too. Old aging parents and grandparents, we keep them because they're worth it, because we're worth it. Some things we keep, like a best friend who moved away or a classmate we grew up with. These are just a few things that make life important. The people that we know who are special and we keep them close, like the family at Central. I will always keep the memories of my last 17 years 
at Central close to my heart. Over those 17 years, we had developed a family atmosphere that was conducive to learning. We, had, we celebrated many successful accomplishments from our students, teachers, parents, and our great community. We also were there for those that hurt. I can remember the day when Mr. Scott had his heart attack out there in the break area. And we tried to revive him and, and was able to get him to the hospital, but, but he passed away two years later. Mr. Scott was our head custodian and wasn't a better man than Mr. Scott. We've also been there for each other with losses in our school families, as well as our own families. I will always be touched by the outpouring of love that was bestowed upon me with the death of my dad. Every day I'd go to my mailbox, uh, somebody on the staff would put a card in my mailbox. And that went on for a whole year. Amazing. I will always be touched. I have been honored and blessed to have served this great school and community as the principal of Forsyth Central. I always remember you never really leave a place you love, part of it you take with you, leaving a part of you behind. And you know, 100 years from now, it ain't gonna matter what kind of house you lived in or what kind of car you drove. What's gonna make the difference is the difference you made in that life of the child. Because I always used to tell my staff, the bottom line, y'all, is that child in the classroom you teach every day. When you come through those front doors, I know some of you may have personal problems or may be tough at home, but when you come through those front doors, this place is yours. Those kids in your classroom are yours, and you need to reflect that. But thanks again for 17 great years, and, and I'll, I'll close with a couple of stories. You know, anyway, uh, you know, y'all can always tell when it was soccer season. It'd be so cold, oh my goodness, it'd be so cold. And I remember going over to West Hall. Sid Bramlett was the girl soccer coach. I'm over on the sideline with about four parents in the stands. And, uh, and I walked down to the sideline and I told Sid, I said, Sid, I, I can't handle this, man. I'm parked up on the hill. I'm going back with my truck. And every time you guys score, I'll flash my lights on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I think we won four to one, but, but the, the girls are so cute. After about the second time, they looked up on the hill to see if I flashed on the lights on the truck. And another time, David Daniel and I, and uh, we, you know, I love going to the events. I, I don't know why, I just love doing it. And I know Mitch does too, and, and, uh, and that's part of it because I think that interaction with the students is so important. Because you see them in the hallway, the next day you say, man, that was a great play you made at third base, or that was a great catch you made. And, and, and you know, that gets them thinking, man, he must have really been there, you know? But we went to Monroe, and, uh, and it was me and David and those four parents that were in the stands. And, uh, and I told David, I, I'm part of my friends, I said, I'm freezing my butt off. He said, well, you know what? In my truck, I got an old uh, uh, camouflage hunting jacket. I said, well, let's get it. So I put that thing on, and we, we stayed outside on that one. I didn't go to my truck. So, but you know, uh, it's kind of interesting. You know, I, I wrote that thing over... 13 years ago, the last thing I wrote for Forsyth Central. And that love and pride that I have for Central is still engraved in my heart. Serving the Central family and serving this great county uh, without, it was probably the best 17 years of my 34 years in education. And uh, one other story, when we, when we took the job in June 89, the county news decided that they were going to print everybody's salaries. All the administrators, all the people in the county office, all the people in the city. And, uh, and, and those of you who know me, I, I like to smile, I like to have a good time. And so I'm out there on bus duty and this one little freshman says, Mr. Fox, I know why you smile a lot. I said, and I thought, oh man, this is a great opportunity to share my faith with this young man. I said, yeah, it's because I love the Lord. And he said, no, that's not it. I saw your salary in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is the last one, I promise. Uh, I like, I liked, you know, serve, working in the lunchroom. I, I had my staff, administrative staff. We, we gave the teachers duty-free lunch. I'm, I hope I'm not stepping out of bounds here, Mitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> but the administrators and the counselors would do the lunchroom duty. Well, Edna Jones, I never forget a lot of, God bless her heart, but uh, I like 
working behind the line. And uh, so I'm working there one day, and, 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 I, and I'm sure they have fries here. I've I never seen the amount of fries these students went through. I mean, it was amazing. And uh, so I'd done that about a week, and, and the second week, Edna came to me. She said, Mr. Fox, I love you being back here helping us, but you're going to have to do something else. I said, why? I said, look at all the kids that are coming in this line. She said, yeah, you, you got those big old hands, you're serving all those fries, no wonder they're coming through your line. <laughs> you know, so I went from serving the fries to going back to being the fry daddy. You know, that little thing that pops up. And little Betty, God bless them, the students I know started going the other line because she had little Betty working the lines and she was real little, you know. But anyway, uh, thank you all for the opportunity for serving this wonderful community. And, and I consider it an honor uh, to be a part of this school and, and like it's one of the greatest joys of my life. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, if we could get the uh, Mize family to come up front, please. Dr. Shannon Mize, uh, class of 1968, family practice physician. Shannon Mize was born in 1950 at Mary Alice Hospital in Cumming. Parents Francis D. and Cecil Mize instilled in him a passion for reading and education. He attended North Georgia College on a hammock scholarship and graduated magna cum laude in 1972. He married Gail Herring and in 1976 earned an MD degree from the Medical College of Georgia, completing his family medicine res residency at UAB Huntsville in 1979. Dr. Mize has served as Chief of Staff at Forsyth County Hospital and Georgia Baptist Hospital and Chief of Medicine at Northside Hospital. He worked alongside Georgia Baptist to obtain a certificate of need for their new hospital, which became Northside Forsyth. He is the Forsyth County Health Board Chairman. He belongs to several medical professional associations. He serves as preceptor for aspiring medical professionals at UNG, MCG, Mercer, Bernal, Emory, and Georgetown Universities. He is an associate professor at, U at Mercer University. An ordained deacon at Cumming First Baptist Church, he has taught Sunday school for over 37 years. He is a 40-year member of the Forsyth County Rotary Club. He supports Boy Scouts of America Troop 39, where he and his sons, Shan and Alex, became Eagle Scouts. Dr. Mize was Forsyth Central High School football team doctor for 25 years. He, Gail, both sons, and daughter-in-law Jamie graduated from Precise Central High School. Alex and Lauren have presented the family with the granddaughter, Ms. Gabrielle. Precise Central High School is proud to induct Dr. Shannon Mize into the 2019 class of the Hall of Fame. My wife said I couldn't talk very long, so I'll try not to, but I've got to do a few thank yous. First of all, I have to thank the Alumni Association. This is a tremendous honor for me, this recognition, because it's given to me by my peers, people that have known me for a long time and have worked with me in different areas of life. And I'm very humbled by it. I don't think I deserve it, but I thank you. You know, Several years ago, when we didn't have to worry about political correctness, it was said that behind every successful man, there was a woman. I suppose that in today's climate, we have to say for a certain individual that may have contributed something positive to their society, <laughs> that there's probably some significant other behind them. Well, my sniffing other 
is my wife, Gail. We've been married 47 years. We dated six. For those that don't know me, I'm a class A personality. It's probably why I was in Piedmont Hospital two or three weeks ago, whenever it was. I don't have a lot of patience, and occasionally I'm known to lose my temper. I also have an erratic schedule, and my wife has put up with that for a long, long time, and I thank you. I also have to thank my two boys, Shannon and Alex. They grew up a little bit different than most American families because we could have a fishing trip scheduled for Saturday afternoon, and I'd get that call in the emergency room. They didn't get to go. Or multiple sports were involved and maybe having a practice or a ball game or whatever else, and I might be the only dad that wasn't there. I'm sure that was frustrating for them and somewhat embarrassing. But not once did I hear y'all complain. Thanks. Not too long ago, a prominent citizen came up to me and they said, I was talking to one of your boys the other day, and that can be very dangerous for me. As a matter of fact, I talked to the other one not too long ago. You have no more good advocates for you than your two boys. Thank you. I have a daughter-in-law named Jamie. Jamie called me up. She was all hot and bothered. You see, she got her calendar mixed up, which is not unusual. But she said, I'm obligated to something else. What should I do? I said, in my family, you take care of your obligations. And that's why she's not here. She has a PhD. She teaches history in the University of North Carolina in Pembroke. And as many of you know, history is my passion. I love it. So she and I get along really well. Then I have Lauren, who along with Alex, have presented me with Miss Gabrielle. Miss Gabrielle will tell you that she is two and a half and is soon to be three. She has been a bright spot in our lives. And quite frankly, when I was at Piedmont, she was the best nurse I had. <laughs> and she hadn't acted up too much tonight, have you, honey? Then we have another family member, her name is Martha. She's our, she's our aunt. And she has been supportive of our family for so many, so many years. Thank you, Martha. I have to recognize my staff. That's Becky Martin and Cindy Johnson. They have been with me for over 35 years, and I cannot tell you how much stuff they have put up with, and I thank you for that. Then I have my brothers and sisters out there. You say, well, you're from a small family, aren't you? Yep. My wife tells me every other week that I'm my only child and my spoiled brat because of that. So I am an only child. I learned early in life that I had developed some social skills, although I didn't know what that was. And around three or four, I understood that if I wanted to have a good friend, I had to be translucent, I had to be honest, I had to care about that person about their whole life. And I'm here to tell you that I have people in this area tonight that we've been really good friends for almost seven decades. And along the way, we have built up friendships. In my opinion, friendships are a huge blessing. And I thank you for the support you've given me. To me, they're as important many times as family relationships. Finally, as usual, I was late to a committee meeting. Now, I usually like to blame Gail for being late. But sometimes it's me. And this committee meeting happened to be the Hall of Fame. It was good that I wasn't there, as, as things turned out. When I got there, I said, well, guys, you got everything worked out? Oh, yeah, we got it worked out. <laughs> and Tim Perry then looked at me and said, OK, you need to know what we've done. So they gave the list. I was 
mortified and shocked and humbled when I found that my name was on it. I still don't know why. But you know, when I found out that Maxine Hubbard Burton was on it, I'm thinking that's a great choice. She is a businesswoman of great business acumen, but she is humble. That's lacking in a lot of successful CEOs, a great representative of the school. And then Mr. Slayton, I didn't know Mr. Slayton, but I understood what had happened. And I've always had a great admiration for people who have a God-given talent. They hone that God-given talent, and they do something with it, and he has, and he'll be good representation too. And now, Kenny, we were all picking on you. You were principal when my boys were here all those years ago. I don't think you had a discipline too many times. But when I heard your name, I had a smile came across my face. Do you remember in the late 90s that Yatesy Harvey, Yatesy Harvey was our uh, theatrical coach. She had pulled off another coup. She's in the Hall of Fame and deservedly so. And this coup was that she and her thespians had been selected by the International Thespian Conference in Lincoln, Nebraska, to have one of 10 plays to be presented there. Now, to try to put that in perspective, that means that the powers that be in the United States and beyond, actually, had decided these were the 10 best plays in America and beyond for that year presented by high school. That's a big deal. Well, really soon I found out what this school was really all about. I'd already known it. But I found out how different facets of the school started coming together. And they said, we're going to support this. And Kenny, you drove a big box truck all the way from Cumming, Georgia to Lincoln, Nebraska. I can't remember who went with you. Okay. Oh, Bob, you went. I should have remembered that. Okay. And then what I found out was, is now this is the principal of our school. He didn't have time for this, but he did it. And then I started seeing different administrators, different faculty members. Coach Bob Hernan, who was a football coach, head football coach, he was a big part of it. He was up there. What I'm trying to say, all facets of the school started coming together, whether it was administration, faculty, secretaries, custodians, or even lunchroom personnel. It was amazing. I found out then that this school cared about the young people. And not just the education that we think of, but to educate people, young people, for life. That was a big deal. Kenny, I, may, I don't know if you remember this or not. You probably don't. My wife, Gail, can shop anywhere in the world where there's not even shopping. <laughs> I have two friends here that were with us in Antarctica. There's no shopping in Antarctica, but my wife found a place to shop. <laughs> so we were in Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska. She found some shopping, and she found two items that she had to have. This is pre-9-11. But we still couldn't get the stuff on the plane. So Kenny finds out about it. He says, you know, I think I can sneak that in the big box truck. Kenny, we still have it at the house, and we appreciate that. <laughs> I bring this whole story up to say this, is that what we had 20 years ago, we have now. We have a very strong administration. We have a faculty. We have secretaries, we have the custodians, we have the people that work in the, in the lunchroom and others that care about the students here. And I thank you for that. And I really think that's why most of us on the alumni board have a passion for it. Because we want a little bit of part in trying to continue what's going on today. I thank you.
If we get the Slayton family up. Stephen Paul Slayton, class of 1989, first uh, Forsyth Central High School state wrestling champion. Steve Slayton was born in the Sharon community of Forsyth County. He attended Midway and Mashburn Elementary Schools, as well as South Forsyth and Ottawa Middle Schools. In 1989, he graduated in the last graduating class of Forsyth County High School. Steve attended Garner Webb University on a wrestling scholarship for two years where he was a two-time Nationals qualifier and then transferred to Georgia Southern University. He earned a BBA degree from Georgia Southern University in marketing with an emphasis in logistics and intermodal transportation in 19, 1995. Steve started his career in transportation before moving into the printing industry. In 19, I mean, in 2003, he started North Georgia Repro Graphics and Imaging located near downtown Cumming. At Forsyth Central High School, Steve was a four-year letterman in wrestling, a three-year letterman in football. His wrestling accomplishments include being a three-time region champion and most valuable player for three years. He compiled an 89-1 record in his four years at Forsyth Central. In 1989, he became the first ever Forsyth Central High School state champion in wrestling by winning the 189 pound weight classification. Steve married his high school sweetheart, Monica Rudder. They have four beautiful children, Henley, Jordan, Spencer, and Jackson. Precise Central High School is proud to induct Stephen Paul Sladen into the 2019 class of the Hall of Fame. Uh, thank you so much. Um, it, uh, this is, when you first hear about it, you, you're like, eh, you know, I'm going into my high school hall of fame. And it really, really doesn't, you don't, you don't think it's that big of a deal or, you know, I grew up here. I, this is where I, I live. This is where I work. I don't, um, but I, I can't express what an honor this is. Um, when you think about the magnitude of 1956, I think was the first year the school opened, and here we are. Quick math, somebody help me out. A lot of years later, and and just to be honored, um, it, it it it's really overwhelming to uh, to be standing up here. It, it's awesome. I, I really appreciate. It. I appreciate Coach Talent um, nominating me. Um, it, uh, the, the Alumni Association, uh, the whole school, uh, Mr. Young, um, I'm, I'm really honored to be here. I um, want to thank, obviously, as you can see, uh, family is a huge part of, of what we're about, the Slaytons. And uh, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't real hard for me to be successful. Um, I had a, a four heroes at home that I, you know, got to go home to every day. My dad, um, my mom, my sister, my brother. Um, it's uh, it, it, it's it's hard to fail when you when you have support staff like that, and everybody comes together, and it's all for the good, and and you support everybody, and it. Uh, it was just hard for me to fail. I had, uh, you know, a big brother um, that was successful in sports and 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 everything he did. I had a, an older sister that was successful in what she did with sports and everything else. And and like I said, they were my heroes. And and uh, 
it was it was easy to uh, I just had to perform I just I had all the support in the world so I, I really do appreciate um, everything my family's done for me and, and um, I'm glad they're all here to celebrate it with me um, I want to talk a little bit about what Forsyth County High School Forsyth Central High School uh, mean to, uh, means to me and, and uh, what it meant to me then it was a great time uh, it, it was some of the best times of my life some of the you know uh, greatest friends I, I, I married my high school sweetheart um, we've been married now 25 years coming up in uh, in May so um, obviously that was a, 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 a one of the things that Forsyth County High School uh, afforded me um, some of uh, my best friends uh, Adam Kraft is best his friend in the whole wide world still today. We started playing, you know, Big Creek Colts football together. Um, but it, it, you know, you just reflect back on people that are still involved in your life and, and it all comes back to right here uh, at Forsyth County High School. So um, it, it's just uh, really an honor. Um, I'm glad. You know, people that came out to to, to see this, it uh, is very humbling, and and I, I truly do appreciate it. Um, and then some of the some of the people that had a huge effect on my life while I was here, uh, you know, the coaches, uh, Ronnie Jackson, Coach Talent, uh, Coach Smith, Coach Hogan. Um, those are all people that I see today, and it's like we never left off. I saw. Coach Smith at the Crab Apple Festival, and and last weekend we you know picked up right where we left off. And, you know it's just awesome to have that, um, you know that past, and to, to still have that. Um, and a story about Coach Jackson. Um, I still talk to him a lot today. But I was in eighth grade, and I was about as big as I am now in eighth grade. So at the time. Uh, junior high was sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So I wanted to try and play high school as a freshman. And Coach Jackson was all in. Yep, yep, we can do it, we can do it. So I, I the whole summer I was with the, with the team and, and, and we, you know, I got to, to uh, practice with them and all. So it came time, we had to go to a football camp at West Georgia. And of course I was in, involved and included. And, that Thursday night before the last day of our uh, football camp ended, Coach Jackson had to drove from we had uh, uh, drove from Carrollton back to Forsyth to a school board meeting to decide if I could play football or if I had to play junior high. Adam at the time was at South and he was hoping that I got to play for the high school, but um, so comes back. The next morning, I'll never forget it, as long as I live, he assembled the team in the, in the foyer of the dorm at, uh, at West Georgia and brought me up and, and said, you know, Steve's not going to be able to play this year with us. The school board's decided to, that he needs to play junior high. But just the fact that he would do that for me is unbelievable. You know, he, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to go represent or fight for me to to do something that you know that I wanted to do and there's just those kind of things that that are uh, you know you never forget those type things so one last thing probably one of the biggest life lessons I learned at, in high school at Forsyth County was I was my sophomore year um, probably not one of my prouder moments but um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I'm Steve Slayton. You know, I'm, I'm 19 and 0, and you know, supposed to win the state championship, and I just forgot to study sometimes. And um, so I had Miss Hayes was my biology teacher, great lady, and uh, grades came out in December, and guess what? I had a 69 point three or four, I think it was. It was something right on the line. And, and uh, so, of course, 
you know, my mom went and talked to Miss Hayes and had other people in the community go and talk to Miss Hayes and Coach Taylor went and talked to Coach Hay Miss Hayes and she said, I'll, I'll look at, I'll review his grades and, and all that and then I'll, I'll let him know tomorrow in class, you know, what, what, if he can do any makeup work. And, you know, I was confident. I'm, you know, I'm Steve Slate. I, you know, <laughs> ain't nobody gonna, what do you mean? I, of course I'm, go to class, she calls me out in the hall and she says, uh, I'm sorry, Steve, there's, there's nothing we can do for you. Nothing I can do. You know, you, you didn't turn in this, you didn't turn this in, you didn't turn that in. And she said, I, I can't, there's nothing I can do for you. I'm sorry. And from that moment on, that was probably one of the greatest life lessons that I learned um, that it doesn't matter. You, you got to do work. You got to do the work. You got to put the work in. Um, I wound up retaking that class. I aced it. I made a 71. But um, <laughs> I, you know, I mean, it was it was it was good because it was the second time. So, um, but it uh, you know it, it's just uh, like I said. It, it I really do appreciate this. It's a it's a huge honor um, and. Um, all the inductees, congratulations. It's uh, great to be inducted with Mr. Fox, of course, who I've known. He was, we were the last graduating class of Forsyth County High School. Mr. Fox came in, was the first principal of Forsyth Central. So, um, but Mr. Mize, I've known, I think every, growing up, I think I thought everybody, every doctor was Dr. Mize. That's just who you, that's the name you heard. But, and, and Ms. Burton, I don't know you, but I, uh, I, it's, it's an honor to be uh, named with the names that are up here. So thank you very much. I do appreciate it. I'll take it. If, you, if you're going to leave it, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, my name is Kevin Talent. Is this what I need to use, this one? My name is Kevin Talent. I had the pleasure to attend here as well, and I'm part of the graduating class of 1995. Um, I, I just want to say a couple of things. First of all, this is the first year I think I've actually had a personal connection with every single member of the Hall of Fame. Uh, Ms. Burton, uh, she doesn't know me, but I know her. Um, she spoke recently to my Leadership for Scythe class and did an absolutely wonderful job. And when I saw you were being selected this year, I thought you were an absolute gem for us to be able to get into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Dr. Mize is my doctor growing up. And of course, I went to uh, high school with Shan and Alex. Um, and, uh, and, and was still my doctor, actually, even after I got, when I moved my family back here. Mr. Fox was my principal uh, while I was here, and something that you may not know is that in the class of 95, uh, that's also the class that his son Kelly was in, and Buddy Childs, who we talked about earlier, his daughter Dana was in that class, so we tended to get away with a lot more than the other classes around us did. Uh, <clears throat> that's why we had such a good time uh, while we were here. Um, and then Steve Slayton, I did not know I had a connection with. Where'd you go, Steve? I didn't know I had a connection with him. Uh, but then when we saw each other tonight, for probably about four or five years, we saw each other every single day at the gym. And I don't know who it was who said it, but they're right. You still wouldn't want to tangle uh, with this guy, certainly. Um, this, the part of the, uh, the, the, the program that I have is called Alumni Updates, and, and what I really want to focus on more than anything is to tell you just a little bit about the association and what it is we're trying to do. If you take a look at uh, one of these uh, membership brochures, which if you're not a member of the association, you should absolutely have one of these in your hand anyway, uh, con considering and pondering whether or not not, you're, not whether or not you're going to join the association, but at what level you're going to join the association. You can see on the back all the things that we've been able to accomplish in the very short time that we've been active. Um, during that time period, the association has raised for the benefit of the school almost $80,000. And I want you to think about that for a little bit. That does, that deserves a round of applause. It really does. <laughs> Forsyth Central is uniquely positioned in the community to be able to do something like that because there is no other school that has been around as long as Forsyth Central. But there's something else about this school, and, and several people have hit on it, and you could see it in everybody's, everybody's talks tonight. There is an absolute emotional connection that people have to this place. And it doesn't matter 
that we're standing in a new building. It, it doesn't matter that a lot of parts of the campus may not look the same as they did when you were here. When you have been a student at this school, you are left with an emotional tie here that brings you back. And it will always bring you back. And it's not just, though, about celebrating the past. That's what tonight is about. But the Alumni Association, for those of you who are considering joining, is also about focusing on what can we do for the future of this school so that not now, 63 years, but in 123 years, when we're having another induction class for this school, we have people who are coming back and are still talking about the emotional connection that they have to go into school in a place like this. Somebody mentioned that we have the same thing we had 20 years ago, a strong administration team and, and, and a great faculty. And there's proof of that. I'm going to tell just a very quick story myself, and then I'll end, I promise. Because um, I promise you, Ms. Gall, I'm not taking 45 minutes. It, it won't be that long. <clears throat> My wife is an assistant principal at a school that I will not name while I'm standing here, but it's not this one. Um, but because she is an assistant principal at that school, my children have a very unique opportunity in that when you're the child of, a, of, a, of, a, of an administrator in the county, you pretty much get to choose where you want to go. So my daughter Madeline has in front of her the choice of pretty much any high school that she wants to attend. And she told us the other day, she announced, she has chosen not to follow my wife to the school that she's at. She does not want to go to the school that she's districted to go to where all of her friends are going to be. She wants to come here. Because she has seen, some, she saw the band the other night at Denmark and she saw something special that she wants to be a part of. And that's what the Alumni Association's goal is. We want every kid to want to not only come to this school, but when they come to this school, be a part of that family so that when they leave the school someday, they have the emotional connection that leads them to want to give back. And so I'm going to end with that. Speaking of giving back, um, you all, if you are not a member of the association and you are, uh, in fact, you don't have to actually be. A, uh, an alumnus of the school to join the association, but certainly all the, those of you who are alumni of the school should join the association, but I've got a better challenge for you. You all should join the association, and I guarantee you every person in this room knows at least two other people who are not members of the association who should join the association. You don't have to join at the $1,000 level. You don't have to join at the $500 level. Join at the $25 level. See what you're doing in the community. See how you can give back to the school. Find two more people. That's the challenge that everybody in this room has tonight. Find two more people who are willing to join the Alumni Association. And let's see if next year the entire place is filled with all the people who were invited to come to this event. Thank you very much. I don't know that there's much more that needs to be said after that, Kevin. I appreciate, uh, appreciate your efforts, the efforts, again, of the FCAA. Uh, this is a special place. You know that. And, uh, and we just want to carry that on, as you said, for the next, next 63 years. So thank you all so much for being here. The school will be open if you want to take pictures out uh, in, in front of the plaques that will be enshrined out there you know, for, the, for the rest of time, if you want any pictures up here. But uh, thank you so much for coming out. We hope to see everybody tomorrow night at the game against North. It's our big rival game. It should be a packed house in our new stadium. Miss Light, I know she's got a constituency where she's supposed to wear some purple, but we all know underneath that purple you'll have red on. And uh, we hope to see everybody here in black and red tomorrow night. Have a great evening. <laughs>